what happens when you take excess water this is overhydration you get urine like this which is clear what happens when you take less water or you are dehydrated you get urine like this and what happens when you take perfect amount of water you get urine which is there in between so this is where you should always aim this one at the middle but what will happen when you take excess water when you take excess water or water it doesn't come out in stool it gets absorbed into your bloodstream and it will be the work of the kidney and sweating to remove excess of it so the kidney carries the burden of it because this is where most of it will go through but when you overwork the kidneys it gets to a point where you're not able to control the amount of salt you're getting out of the body yes this is not a black and white kind of a matter because we have instances a lot of them where you need to take a lot of water like for example you're working somewhere in Konza somewhere very hot and humid or maybe in Mombasa somewhere very humid and you are working you are sweating a lot if you've tested your sweat it's salty this is you losing sodium which is responsible for maintaining that water in the body among other processes like for example nerve conduction this is the reason why when you have an issue with your electrolytes one of which is sodium you start getting issues to do with the nerves that's being dizzy you start getting like when you stand you feel that you're very dizzy you get headaches in there and uh, it can lead to coma that's in you know extreme cases hydration is not a white and a black kind of a situation let me give you scenarios one someone who is seated in an office during June, July, when it's almost gloomy everywhere, so you're not losing a lot of water, that person, even maybe a glass of water, maybe a cup of tea, might be enough to take them through the day. Compare that to someone who is working, let's say, during December and January when it's so hot, or maybe somewhere which is very humid in Mombasa, that someone who is working, sweating a lot, and when you taste your sweat, you know you're losing water and sodium at the same time, when you compare those two people, their consumption of water is so different. Or just someone who is somewhere in a desert losing a lot of water through sweat. That person will require a lot of water. Or someone who is in a gym exercising, that person will require water. And by default, they need to replace that water which they are going to lose. But are they not going to lose salt also? That's the electrolytes that you're talking about are making it easier. It's not a salt. Okay, it's part of the salt because you're losing sodium, which will be part of what is really needed. But if this is your career, you really need to know how you're going to replace the, you know, electrolytes that you lose. So by just maybe simply using salt, sea salt, which will give you sodium, which is the most important thing that you're losing in your sweat and also in your urine. But how do you know that you are overhydrated, by the way. So the first thing is, like we said, clear urine. This one is someone who've taken a lot of water and it's not ideal. It's not the best thing to have. You should try to aim sheer, like we said. Also, when you've taken water, a lot of it, you are walking and you can hear some splashes in your stomach that you have taken a lot of water. 800 to 1 litre of water within an hour, that's a lot of water in your body. And probably if you're an athlete or someone who is running or exercising and losing a lot of water, you need to take that large amount of water, you really need to put some salt in there so that you try to hold on to some of that water because you know sodium is what usually help in balancing that because if you have less sodium you're going to start accumulating water in the cells because there's no way of pulling it out of the cell so you accumulate of that water you start getting edema by now you understand that taking excess water which is over hydration can cause hyponatremia which is less sodium in the body but we have other conditions that can cause similar situation one kidney insufficiencies where you find that the kidney is not able to accumulate salt on you know reduce salt in your urine so try to hold on to it so it's not able to do that so you lose a lot of it and you end up having less the other thing is taking less sodium per day if you're taking less than required i'll put the numbers here uh you might not be able to accumulate enough water and in some of the situation you find that you're going to the washroom and back washroom and back drinks whether hard or soft we have alcohol and we have caffeine can inhibit adh which is antidiuretic hormone and this hormone is responsible for keeping water in the body and when you inhibit that and it's the reason why when you take a beer or two you start going to the washroom every now and then when that hormone is inhibited you're not able to keep water in the body and in the process of doing so you lose your salts so part of 
the hangover treatment should be taking in water because you lost a lot of it this you have dehydration and try to put a pinch of salt in there because you lost also your electrolytes diarrhea is another way you lose a lot of electrolytes and this is the reason when you get to the hospital with diarrhea like for example you have cholera one of the things they usually do is to infuse you with water and they add salt there can be normal saline that can come uh, with the sodium in there or they give you something like ORS, which is a combination of zinc. You have some electrolytes that will be there to replace what you are losing in your diarrhea. And by the way, I have a quick home remedy I usually use for diarrhea that usually I arrest my diarrhea. Then there. Like this personal thing I usually do. I use uh, charcoal. And by the way, when you have fratulence, when you're having diarrhea, it can fix that. I think, okay, if you're interested, I'll make a video about how you can go about that it's usually very interesting sometimes when you have food poisoning and stuff you can use that and it treats most of those stomach issues and charcoal never get absorbed into your system so it's something you don't actually need to worry if you know how to use charcoal you can go ahead if you don't then you can tell me in the comments you know make a dedicated video about that one in conclusion taking water is personal it will depend with your situation like for example you are an athlete you are losing a lot of water you need to replace that because you want to avoid this one here uh, dehydration so you need to take a lot of water and because you are losing also electrolytes out in sweat you need to replace those electrolytes so you need to put something in your water like salt or you can buy just you know those water that usually come with electrolytes if you are working in an office having a container like this of water and you take the whole of it in a day it's not ideal it's not actually healthy if your urine is going this direction then you need to tone down that water and try to be here because you are going to you know start having issues unless maybe you're adding a pinch of salt of which why would you take a lot of water when at the end of the day you just will have that just you know pushed out of the body and also even overworking the kidneys just take enough so how much water should you take in a day we'll take an average adult like me in a normal ideal day i'm not supposed to go beyond three liters and ideal day i'm saying or i'm talking about i'm not exercising so i'm not losing a lot of water and i'm not seated somewhere in an office in winter or maybe somewhere like june july here in kenya so i'm somewhere in between it's a little bit sunny i'm outside i'm not just seated so three liters contains like everything that goes into my stomach which includes food drinks can be coffee can be tea or anything and also the water the actual water and again your body will always ask you for water when you are thirsty you should always aim at that point where it's almost asking you for that water don't wait until your urine is like this so i know now you have a baseline i took my time to try to put some points here because there is something you're going to notice even in food water is different it's different in individuals you're going to find someone who is taking a lot of water and very healthy and you're going to find another person who is taking less water and very healthy their situations are different you find that also bodies are different you can find someone who is sweating more than the other person someone who is sweating more than the other might end up taking more water compared to that other person who is really sweating and really it's very interesting i was in mombasa when i was working there i went back and i came across someone who is pushing a cart which was carrying water and that person was not sweating i myself was just walking in the street and i was drenched in sweat so the differences between me and them they might require less water compared to me and by the way, how do you treat hyponatremia by now you understand you can put a pinch of salt take fruits and nuts and things that will give you micronutrients because that's where some of those electrolytes will come from also make sure that when you are drinking water you're taking excess and if you've been taking excess water tone down reduce that excess water if you have a kidney issue go to a hospital get that checked out if you take excess of let's say caffeine and uh, alcohol reduce that and it should be you will find yourself taking less water and by the way try to be observant look at how much water you usually take in a day and this should be your threshold you know that usually take let's say a liter or maybe two in a day that's what you should always be taking and this is what your body is able to handle you have others who take three you have others who take only maybe 500 ml of water and that should take them throughout the day so it's upon you so i hope i cleared everything about water if you still have a question you can continue this conversation down in the comment region and where at it you can just subscribe you know I have some more very interesting videos coming and if you have a topic that you want me to cover you can also tell me as well in the comment region see you in the next video